Hey guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk to you about five new Louis Vuitton items that are really popular and hot right now and the reasons why I don't think I'll be purchasing them. Now with any of these videos, it is purely my opinion and my views. And if you love these items and they work really well for your lifestyle, just take this video with a grain of salt. Don't take offense to it but I just wanted to point out a few things that I've noticed that may make you reconsider your purchase as well because at the end of the day, these are pricey items and we need to think about a lot of things so that we don't make a really costly mistake. So it's always better to think about these purchases more than to just jump on them. The five new Louis Vuitton items that I'm gonna be talking about are the Recto Verso card holder, the Odeon PM, which is a herbo bag, the Petit Sat Plat, the Pont Neuf bag, and the double zip pochette in the reverse giant monogram that everyone loves. So I've been seeing a lot of unboxings on Instagram and on YouTube of these hot new Louis Vuitton items. And to be really honest, I was really tempted and I nearly added a couple of these items, but I talked some sense into me and told myself you don't need them and there were definitely clear reasons why these items won't really work out for me. So let's get started with the very first item because I have been getting a few questions from you guys asking what I didn't like about this card holder, the Recto Verso card holder, because I actually checked this card holder out when I last went to Louis Vuitton when I picked up my mini pochette and the toiletry pouch 19. And I did mention it in my unboxing video. I didn't end up getting it. And a few of you actually asked me what I didn't like about this card holder. So this new Recto Verso card holder is actually quite innovative and I can see why it is so popular. So it is a rather large card holder that can act as a card holder, coin purse, and a key pouch all in one. It has a really nice premise, but there are three major problems that I have with it. The first problem I had with it is actually the price of it. It retails for 835 Australian dollars. And for a small leather good that is not even a full wallet made of canvas, that price is a bit of a deal breaker for me, but even then I did check it out because if I loved it, then it'll be worth it. And the reason why I don't think it's really worth the price point is because we can get items that do the same function for much, much less. So for those extra details, I don't think I will be willing to pay that much more. So for example, this is my Louis Vuitton key clay that I had in my collection for at least five or six years and I absolutely adore this thing. This I think retails for still less than 300 Australian dollars at the moment and I know that this is not the same as a Recto Verso card wallet because that one has a lot more details like the card slots, the separate coin section and another slip pocket and all of that. But the thing is, this clay does exactly the same function as that one and I think it's actually easier to use and it is cuter in my opinion. So this clay can definitely house a lot of cards and you can also put coins in it. It's just not compartmentalized, but you can definitely fit everything in there. And because of the zip closure, your coins are safe, your cards are safe, your cash is safe. And you also have a keychain, which then you can attach your key to it. So this little clay for the price of it, does everything that that Recto Verso card wallet will do. So because this clay is just so functional for a small little thing at that price point, I don't actually see the Recto Verso wallet as 550 Australian dollars more impressive than the key clay right here. So that is my first problem, the price point. The second thing is it is quite large, but it is actually quite flat. So I don't actually know whether it'll be really functional once you fill it up with the cards and the coins. So I feel like once you fill up the back section where all the card slots are with all your cards, then I actually don't think you'll be able to put the key into the key pouch section because it is so flat and it won't really be all that expandable. So I think you'll have to leave your keys outside but just attached to the key ring. So if you consider that, then it doesn't really do that much more than a key clay anyway, because when I fill this key clay full with cards and coins and cash, 
I usually have to leave my keys out because they won't all fit together. So if I'm gonna use the Recto Verso card wallet like that anyway, you're really not that much better off than just investing in a key clay, which costs like a third of the price of that one. And the third problem that I had was, I just didn't really like the aesthetics of it. When the sales associate brought it out to show me, I looked at it and I was really underwhelmed. It just didn't look that pretty in my eyes. It was just a really awkward size for my liking and this is again personal preference. So a clay like this, sorry I keep comparing it to this clay but I just can't help myself because I just think this clay is just so functional and cute. So when I saw this clay for the first time I absolutely loved how adorable it looked but when I looked at the Rectoverso card wallet I looked at it and I felt nothing. It wasn't little and cute like this. It wasn't large and functional. It's just a really awkward in-between size in my opinion. So yes, I made the decision not to buy that Recto Verso card wallet. The next Louis Vuitton item that is really popular that I'm not going to be purchasing is the Odeon Hobo bag. So this is their new Hobo bag in their line. It comes in the monogram canvas and I believe it comes in two different sizes. And again, I can definitely see why this is such a popular bag because first of all, it actually has a decent price point. It retails for just over 2,600 Australian dollars and it does have a lot of details to it, which actually makes at price point really reasonable in my opinion. So I love the luggage tag detail at the front. It is actually really cute. It has an adjustable shoulder strap. It's got the zip closure. It's got the little sort of fascetta bits and pieces. Now the reason why I won't be purchasing that bag is because I feel like it's been done before and I liked the previous design better and I'm referring to their discontinued Galliera bag especially in the PM size is very comparable to the Odeon bag. I just think that the Galliera bag was just so much cuter with the gold plate at the front and it just had a nicer more rounded more feminine silhouette with the hobo bags making a comeback if I am going to add a hobo bag to my collection right now I would prefer to get a pre-loved Galliera bag because I just think that that design was just so much cuter I don't know what do you guys think do you agree with me or are you in love with the Odeon bag because I can definitely see why the Odeon bag will be so popular it is actually a really really cute nice design at a great price point like I said but I just cannot help myself comparing it to the older Galliera style which I really loved a lot more than this Odeon one now let's talk about the petite sack plat. I was actually so close to purchasing this bag because it was actually available online on the Australian official Louis Vuitton website when it was first released and it was actually also in stock at the Rocks Boutique in Sydney and I saw that it was in stock on my day off on a Monday so I really was so close to driving over there and grabbing this bag because I knew it was going to be one of those difficult to get really hot bags that is going to be sold out all the time for a few months at least. So the reason why I didn't go ahead and bought it is because I just felt like if I went out and bought this bag, the reason I would have bought this bag was because I didn't want to miss out on a potentially hot item, a potentially difficult to get item that no one can get their hands on. But hey, I got my hands on it. So congratulations to me for grabbing it before everyone else. And to be really honest with you guys, in my head I was thinking, oh my gosh, I might be the first one to properly unbox this bag on YouTube and that video is gonna get so many views. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that thought has crossed my mind. So I was so tempted, but then you know what? I told myself, snap out of it. You're not gonna spend 1800 Australian dollars. So what, you can do an unboxing and get more views? I mean, yes, maybe that's worth it, but that's still a super irresponsible thing to do to just spend that much money to make a video when I can make videos on the actual items that I actually really like even though it may not be the hottest item on the blog 
right this minute so I stopped myself I just feel like it is one of those mini bags that you can't really fit too much in because it is so flat and you guys know that I do want to add an Hermes mini Evelyn bag to my collection in the gold color and I feel like the mini Evelyn has a very similar size to the Patek Sat plaid but I feel like it's a little bit more expandable so you'll be able to fit a few more items because the Petit Sac plaid is really structured whereas the Evelyn mini has a much more relaxed shape so I'll be able to fit a bit more and so I thought I really want to add a mini Evelyn to my collection so that will be a better alternative as a crossbody mini bag than the Petit Sac plaid so I do understand that it is a mini bag and you're not supposed to be able to fit too many things in there but I just feel like there would be more functional nicer mini bags that I can buy as opposed to getting that one and of course if you absolutely love the aesthetics of that one and you just love that bag of course you should buy what you like but for me I wouldn't actually prefer that bag over a lot of other mini bag options that are really casual out there Next, let's talk about the new blogger it bag, which is the Pont 9 or Pont Neuf bag that is a really luxurious full leather bag that is relatively new from Louis Vuitton. They released this, I think, towards the end of May, and I actually went into Louis Vuitton to check it out in person. My initial thoughts were, it's got really cute little details to it, and I'm a sucker for cute details. I just absolutely love cute details. And it is a really luxurious bag made of really nice, smooth, luxurious leather. The leather does actually feel really luxurious and really substantial, and it's got a certain squishiness to it. So yeah, I definitely think that it is a really nice luxurious bag. But the reason why I wouldn't be adding that bag to my collection is because I think that the design is rather boring. It has been done before, and you guys probably already know what I'm talking about. Gucci did a very, very similar bag and it's pretty much identical to it. And I feel like that sort of uh, design vibes with the Gucci brand a lot better than the Louis Vuitton brand because I just feel like that sort of a design looks a lot more cohesive with Gucci's branding and style. I can't really put my finger on it, but that sort of design just wears a Gucci logo a lot better than an LV logo in my opinion. So if I were to grab a bag in that style, I think I would much prefer to go with a Gucci version. Not to mention the Gucci one is much more affordable. This LV Pont 9 bag is 5,600 Australian dollars thereabouts, which is really pricey. And yes, for a full leather bag, outside, inside, that is made really well of really high quality leather. I'm not saying that is not worth it, but I'm just saying you can get something similar from another luxury designer for less money. Another bag that I would actually rather go for in that sort of a style over this Pont 9 bag would be the new Saint Laurent bag. And that Saint Laurent bag is actually called the Solferino small satchel. I just really don't know how to say that, but it has a very similar design. It looks just as luxurious. And I know that I do like the feel of Saint Laurent leather, but this one is over $2,000 cheaper than the LV Pont 9 bag. So in terms of the comparable designs, there are just other bags that I would rather go for in that sort of a look over the Pont 9 bag any day. So I definitely won't be adding one of those either. And the last new popular bag from Louis Vuitton that I wanted to talk about is the double zipped pochette in the giant reverse monogram. I've also been seeing this bag a lot on Instagram as well. And I've noticed some of the consignment stores have been reselling these bags at a higher price than the retail price as well, which usually means that these bags are hard to get from the store and they are in great demand and they're very popular because otherwise why would these consignment stores be able to sell them for a higher price than what you can get from the actual Louis Vuitton boutique, right? And I actually really like the giant reverse monogram on this particular style of bag. I just think that it is really well executed because you literally have the one giant LV monogram in the middle of this pochette bag. So it's not too overwhelming. It's not on a massive bag like the on the go tote in the giant monogram. I just feel like that's just too loud but in this small bag I actually do think it looks quite nice but I actually once had the double zip pochette in the emprunt leather if you guys remember from my Europol last year but I ended up selling that one because 
I couldn't fit enough for my lifestyle. So this kind of a bag I'll actually be using as a casual crossbody bag on a day-to-day -day basis rather than as an evening bag because it does have a certain casual look to it, especially this canvas version. For a daytime bag, I do like to be able to fit a little bit more than just my phone and a lipstick and a key. And because this double zip pochette is just so thin, although it has the two zipped compartments, it just didn't fit much for me at all. And I imagine this canvas version would have exactly the same capacity as that on print version that I had. So on capacity alone, I just won't be adding this one, but it is a cute one to look at. So what do you guys think about these relatively new items from Louis Vuitton? Do you love them or do you agree with me on some of these items? And are there other Louis Vuitton items that you'd like me to talk about that you've been thinking about or eyeing? Do let me know in the comments below. Maybe I will do another similar video featuring some of the other new release items. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today and I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video. Bye guys!